Hi there. My name is Optima. And my name is Maximum, or Max for short. We were hired to help your instructor with the operations research course. Yes, these official instructors tend to be kind of boring. They need someone like us to spice things up for them. Max, you are being mean. Sorry, I'm just being honest. Enough complaining, let's get to work. Okay, fine. So, I want to see the introductory lecture you've been working on. Sure, it is a masterpiece. Sounds intriguing, can't wait to see it. All right. First, to break the ice, I'm asking the question everyone should be able to answer at some level, what is optimization? Wait, don't you want to say a few words about operations research first? Sounds like a brilliant idea. Also, a chance for me to tell my amazing story. Which of them? The one how I ended up changing the major from applied math to industrial engineering after seeing that cool print on your t-shirt. Which of them? The one that says, operations research, the science of better. Yes, this one works well with mathematicians. I have another one targeting engineers from other majors. What does that one say? You don't know the punchline for your new major? I thought it was, operations research, the science of better. That's for operations research. The one for industrial engineering says, engineers make things, industrial engineers make things better. That's also a nice one. I love it. I'm glad. This gives me a great idea for a smooth transition from industrial engineering to operations research, to optimization in the intro lecture. I like this sequence. It should work like a charm convincing the students that they are taking the coolest course of the coolest major. Cool beans. So, I start with, engineers make things, industrial engineers make things better. Yes, this one helps to send a clear message about what sets industrial engineering apart. Other engineering disciplines deal with particular domain application areas, whereas industrial engineering helps improving the processes across the board in a systematic fashion. Systematically engineering the world, as one of the departmental banners says. See, that's another good one. So, industrial engineers are useful in virtually any sphere, be it manufacturing, computational biology, energy management, healthcare, finance, or sports analytics, you name it. Yes, whatever humans do, they strive to do it better and better. Which leads us to operations research, also known as the science of better. The science of better, a better part of industrial engineering. And this naturally leads to your what is optimization slide. I would call optimization the science of the best, because in optimization we are aiming to find the best possible solution among the feasible alternatives. Our objective is to find a solution that either minimizes a negative attribute of our decision, such as loss, cost, or waste, or maximizes a positive attribute, such as benefit, revenue, or profit. A wonderful idea. Science of the best the best part of the science of better. Bingo. Next, I want to continue to a brief historical reference. The origins of optimization are attributed to the first century, when the Alexandrian mathematician hero, solved the problem of finding the shortest path between two points by way of the mirror. The solution is known as Hero's Theorem of the Light Ray, which became the origin of the theory of geometrical optics. This is a great way to highlight the key role optimization played in advancing science from its early days. The solution of a simple optimization problem gave rise to an important theory in physics. Indeed, the solution is so simple that we can demonstrate it within a minute. So, we have the source of light given by point A, the observation point B, and we need to find the shortest path the light will travel from A to B by reflecting off the mirror. So, the problem consists in finding the optimal point C on the line representing the mirror that will make the sum of the lengths of the segments AC and CB as short as possible. Right. At this point I want to pause and let the students discover their inner hero by solving the problem he solved 2000 years ago. Another wonderful idea. I'm pretty sure they will figure out that they can find the solution by plotting the symmetric reflection of either A or B with respect to the mirror line. Let's plot the symmetric reflection of A to be specific. Sure, let's call it A prime. 
then A prime C plus C B is the same as A C plus C B. So, our problem is now equivalent to finding the shortest path from A prime to B by the way of the mirror. And since A prime and B are on the opposite sides of the mirror, we just need to draw a straight line between these two points and find its intersection with the mirror line. And it is easy to show that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection at the solution point. Nice and simple. What's next? After this glimpse of ancient history, we fast forward to the 17th century. This is another great illustration of the major role optimization played in scientific developments. The invention of differential calculus was largely motivated by observing that the tangent line at the points of minima and maxima has zero slope. And where would our civilization be without differential calculus? That's a rhetorical question. Indeed. And how do you like the quote I put on this slide? Love it. I don't think anyone will have doubts about the practical importance of optimization once they see this great quote of Euler. I concur with this assessment. The next historical development I would like to highlight takes us forward to the 20th century, when the digital computer was invented. Makes sense. Computers spurred the development of numerical optimization, because they made solving larger scale problems possible. And developing efficient algorithms required serious advances in theory, so computers started the golden age of optimization. Some of the most significant early progress on both theory and algorithms was associated with solving linear optimization problems. I find the story of Leonid Kantorovich particularly curious. He was one of pioneers of linear optimization, but because of the Cold War, it took several decades for his achievements to be recognized by a Nobel Prize. The next breakthroughs in linear optimization were made during World War II, when new algorithms were developed for solving problems arising in military logistics and operations. This is when the terms mathematical programming and linear programming were coined. Precisely, because the optimal solutions were referred to as plans or programs, so the name programming for finding optimal programs made perfect sense. The rise of computer programming a few decades later made the use of this terminology with respect to optimization somewhat confusing nowadays. That's why there is a push in optimization community to abandon the use of the term programming when referring to optimization theory and algorithms. That's right, the Mathematical Programming Society was renamed into the Mathematical Optimization Society not too long ago. But the society's flagship journal is still named Mathematical Programming. It may be a little too late to change that one, the journal published too many influential papers. Anyway, let's move on with your presentation. Right, returning of the breakthroughs of 1940s, this is when George Dantzig published The Simplex Method and John von Neumann developed the duality theory. This is the material that we cover in the course, because it is still of fundamental importance for linear programming. The golden age of optimization that started around that time is still in full bloom today. Indeed, optimization is applied to improve processes in virtually all spheres of human activities. Some application areas listed on this slide are just a tiny piece of a tip of the iceberg. Today, optimization continues evolving at an astonishing pace. To illustrate this point, our department offers courses in linear programming, integer programming, network optimization, non-linear programming, combinatorial optimization, global optimization, stochastic optimization, heuristic optimization, as well as several other topics in optimization. This is indeed a very impressive list, and it is not even complete. I am looking forward to taking all these courses during my graduate studies. Once you take all these courses, you will be equipped with tools for a successful career in any industry of your choice. I feel like the sky is the limit. The sky and beyond.